Everyone can be seated. You may continue with publishing the next call. Thank you, Judge. The next call is BB. Maybe 
rising a little bit a little bit okay let's go to CC please Exactly. I'm just saying. All I'm saying is, thank you. I 
big bottle. A hundred times. You gotta win over it. If you go, you go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead and you fucking find a fucking phone and you call. And find out what the fuck is going on. If they pick up. Come on, they're obviously not, it's not a working number. You find another phone and you, you go call. Where it's set up this bullshit is, if somebody's like trying to fix for fucking some shit and just fucking going on me or whatever. Or for okay. other stuff. Okay, well, there's nothing but they can listen to whatever conversation they want. I'll call from the office, and then from there, I'll call you. Exactly. Alright, let me know then. Okay, they're only... Okay, let's Okay, does somebody call the undercover next? Yes. Alright, who calls the undercover? Uh, Charlie Adelson does. Alright. That's called FF. Could we publish that one? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. to tell the jury whether the defendant d hit star 67 I guess you can hit that before dialing the number to camouflage your own number yes I believe he did okay and that was somehow reflected on the wire on the wire yes it has dialed digits all right and after this call was made do we have three unanswered calls from the defendant to Catherine Magvanoa that sounds right all right and is he the first is is she the first person he calls after he hangs up with the undercover? Yes. 
All right. At some point, does she call back? Yes, she does. Okay. Publishing call GG. Yep. And he, he left. It, it rang a long time? 
I want to say it was like on the seventh or eighth floor, I know they saw. And he left it. Long time. Yeah, yeah, no, I was almost like, uh, I was almost like, uh, and he was asking me, like, who, you know, who is it? He was, he was listening. I need that paper to see some lady. He was, who are you? I said, don't worry about it. And, you know, I'm trying to figure, trying to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, this person is on the assumption that I'm helping. Is there a friend in Broward or is there a brother from Broward? He, he said he was just, he said he was this guy, some of this guy who's been in there for a while, he's incarcerated, his brother. And he's saying that he has not been paid and his family has not been taken care of and this is not going away. And I'm like, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't help, I just give charity out. You come in my yeah, office. Like you can't be like, you work. like you're being people threatening you or you're mentioning no. names. And, you know what and I mean? He sounded, honestly, he didn't sound Latin. And he sounded like, you know, just, you know there's a little bit of a New York accent to his talking. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. Well, he didn't threaten me at all. He did not threaten me at all. He just let me know this ain't, this is not going away. And, mm -hmm. he, and he's like, you need to take care of him, you need to do the right thing. He was there for you. And I'm like, right, um, I, go, I go, I don't know. He goes, I go, I don't know who this person is. I said, but, I said, I said, let me call you back later. That's how I left him. And I said, oh. I said, sir, I said, I don't know who this guy is you're even talking about, but mm -hmm. let me give you a call back later, okay? He's like, okay, do the right thing. Which do the right thing. Do the right thing. You know, sound like a fucking cop that's fishing that's sort of investigator or someone's playing games. But I don't, I don't, he's coming up with a lot of fucking details. And I, I don't know if know these details because I don't know who the people's names are talking about. I mean, you may, you may be in the wrong king. You may not even know what you're talking about. Exactly. Just one, a little quick recap. This is another one you know, like how to, how to, like, how to do this Friend. He goes, who is this? He goes, hello? I go, hi. He goes, who is this? And I go, I'm returning a phone call. And he goes, what is this in reference to? So I said, that's the exact word? Yep. Yeah. What is this in reference to? In reference to? Wow, did you write some executed words? Yeah. No, he was well spoken when I'm on that. I said, what is this in reference to? So I said, I'm returning a call that Simon, I'm returning a message that Simon had left this morning. That was the name, Simon? That was the name when we called up my office mm -hmm. and looked at everything and said, listen, I gave a piece of paper to Mrs. Abelson last week with a number on it. That was a call mm -hmm. to Mrs. Simon. Okay. So mm -hmm. I said, I said, okay. I said, I, I said I'm re returning the message from Simon. So then he knew mm -hmm. that it was a reference to this fucking nonsense. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, what, what I told him. I said, you know, I go with you as well. I know that your family, the family, yeah, yeah. the money. He kept, he kept referencing that, like, we're giving all this money to a fucking family, like, and referencing those two names, Tudo and Tupo or whatever, that yeah. told me I'm giving money to you and someone to do, and your wow. family. I don't know these people. Never met them. So, and really he's his brother, is his brother, is he this person that's the same person incarcerated? Yeah, he's saying he's his brother that's incarcerated. And he's saying he's from Broward. He said he's, he said he referenced something that was with him in Broward. So I don't know if he's not incarcerated in Broward County, is he from Broward? I don't know who these, who these people are. But I don't like the reference. And your family, and so who I don't know who the dude is that you're with, or if they're just making up names, or if I hear who should just go to the FBI and say, you know what, let's, let's play phone tag. Exactly. So I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't you should have been like, while you're doing all this, right? Like, number one, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Well, he never, he never said he was in a hurry. And he was, you know, I just wanted him to keep talking. Uh -huh. That's why I wanted to get a feeling of who the person is. Yeah, because he wasn't like, you know, he was one of them who I was now, really, like Tom Ford. And yeah. it, but when he, he left, he was like, yo, he was like, listen, he gave him money, he, he has not been paid, his family hasn't been paid, it's fucking wrong, and he was like, it's wrong, and he goes to the reason, because this ain't going away. He's like, do the right thing, take 
shared it and he helped people out. I'm like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know who he is. You know, I don't know him. You know, my family. I don't know what. Like, I think. But you get a lot of people. You run across so many people every day. Listen, in two seconds, you. Read something in the newspaper, read Google last name, and in three minutes, the homeless man today has technology to know where you live, where you are. Okay. Because they're not at home anymore. I was in the end of that. Okay. Let me find out. 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 Let me Tell someone like, stop the shit. 305, 712, 5570, correct? Uh, 55, yeah, 305, 712, 5570. Uh, okay. If they need to know that I'm not, yeah, it's fucking stupid what they're doing. I'm not paying anything to pay anything to do with it. Yeah, no. The only thing I want to do is collect my reward from the FBI. Of course, no. I want call I should have asked you after that call both parties are threatening to call the FBI that's correct um, has anybody called any law enforcement to report any of this no okay and in this call we're hearing about several things a rendition of the the phone call to the undercover and mr. Adelson says supposedly I'm giving money to you and these two other guys Anywhere on here or elsewhere does he say, who have you been telling about all the money you've been extorting me, extorting out of me over the last two years? No, it's not mentioned at all. <clears throat> what does Magbanawa do after they hang up from this call? She calls Sigfred Garcia. Okay, I think it's actually a text next. Third, uh, HH. Oh, sorry. Yes, it is a text first. Can we publish that, please? All right, and then a call from her to Garcia next. I I is that right? Correct at 1:22 p.m. All right, let's publish that, please. Obviously, we're doing their 
whatever they're doing, they're running. And like, they're very, very close to recording already. Whatever it is, you're getting the tips because my name is in Boston. And um, it gets just gets better. But I'm like, you know what, I'm supposed to just tell me everything on the phone right now because I don't have time. I'm fucking working. Like, what what is it? Like, I want to handle this and I want to handle this like right now. So, um, he said, okay, they call the office. I was like, look, I tried to contact that number. It's like not a word number. They're like, I was like, why don't you go ahead and start to do seven and go call a freaking number. And then, whatever, that person did it. They go, okay, I'm returning a phone call. And then the person goes, who are you? And they're like, doesn't matter. I'm returning a phone call regarding something of a paper or whatever. And they're like, okay, well, we know you've been helping you now. Um, they said my name and your name. And I, um, Huh? Is it Katie? Is it Katie? Yes. Yeah. Um, they need to help me now. And he's like, I don't even know what they're talking about. I don't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know if you're the right person to talk about. For all I know, it could be another Katie or whatever. And I was like, okay. What else do they say? They're like, oh, well, they're a brother. They're a brother of, um, of this other person that's supposed to be incarcerated. And their brother of them, and then they know him from 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 Broward. I don't know if they were together in Broward and he got out or whatever the case was. And he's like, but this time he needs help. Do the right thing. Like they, the fact he's like, we know for a fact that you're helping out there. I'm like, helping who out? Yeah, I'm help. I work for you before. Like that's it. But like, that's not helping me out. Is he working for you? And I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. So, but they said, do the right thing. His name is supposed to be Hyman. Um, they're a brother of the person that's incarcerated, and they said that name. And I was like, no, this needs to stop. Like, this needs to stop. Because somebody's harassing me, somebody's harassing your family, and they're putting my name, and then I need, and that's where other person's name. It's getting too detailed. It's somebody that's. No, for sure. Yeah. For sure. He said that the person had, like, he's just trying to get him to talk more. He's like, the person has, like, kind of maybe a New York accent. He, some of the words was a little bit, you know, like, he, he wasn't threatening at all. He was just saying, you need, it's time for you to help out this person and their family because he needs it. Because we know that you're well, not being What family? The person was family. Dazzle and his family because they need it. And and then before the, and he goes, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, and a person goes, well, do the right thing. Okay, you tell them, well, listen, we gotta keep on asking you whether we're gonna call cops. So that's what I said. I was like, why did you just say that? And, oh no, the person said this is not gonna end. Do the right thing. Did he get information? Where do you get want to get the phone number? Get the phone number. Uh, the numbers that you can give me are the wrong numbers. No, no, no. 305-712-6570. They picked up. Because I was getting tired of it. I don't know what's happening or whatever. 712-6570. No, no, no. 305-712-6570. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're putting my name, they're putting your name, they're putting it, okay. and they're coming out of the Okay? Are you going to work for you? 716 All right, JJ, please.
Did Garcia call the undercover? We believe so. There was a hang-up call. All right. Did he leave a message? No. Did he ever actually talk to the undercover? No. Was there a voice, outgoing voicemail similar or fitting the description, the colorful description that we got? Yes. All right. Okay. Let's play LL, please. Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey. Hello? So, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hold on. Okay. So. Hold on. Give me two seconds. Let me just drop off. Thank you. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, here's I call the number, right? And there's an answering machine. There's like something in the answering machine now. Like, what the fuck? Like, some girl guy, like, called me on an answering machine. And said, why do I need to use it? Like, I don't understand the joke. I don't get it. 
So it's just an answering machine no one spoke to you? Uh, no. And like, were they talking all the time? And they were asking the machine all of a sudden. I don't know, like, because um, I can't really remember that someone actually find out for me, you know? And it was like they, they said, I don't know if they said their name was, was whatever, the Google or Taco or whatever. Shit, they said on the country machine. All of a sudden. Now, now it has an answering machine. Like a voice mail, I mean. What's a voice mail say? Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Let, let, me find, let me find out. Because it's like I can't, like, you call the work and then. Yeah. Call, when you call, do you call with uh with the call block? Huh? Yeah. Do you call? Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't matter. No matter what phone you're using, it's still show, you know? Well it sure it doesn't show who's calling you. I know. You know how to block a phone. Right. That's not the point. But it's like success. So I did that. I ran it seven times. I'll be there in one minute. Without Tylenol, um, it's like an inch, it's a few minutes, I refer to it, it's not Tylenol. Yeah. Um, okay. Hi, you know, it's like squawking lady, get the fuck out the way, you get out. Yeah, I would, I would do this, I would, um, yeah, you should just call again later. Yeah, but listen, you know what, with all this crank calling, I'm going to call a very fucking body phone, and fucking leaving a message in everybody's fucking phone. For everybody's phone. Wanna play games? Wanna play games? We're really fucking up because they. It's me, it's over you. And they, they called. And I mean, the, the only thought in my head is these. So I've got one thing. Maybe you can find out, or I'm gonna wait a couple of days, and then I may call the person back. So the person was. The, when they answered the phone at first, they weren't that ghetto, and as they started talking to me, they started acting, talking more tough, but it was more like a, I could hear a New York accent in there. And it's yeah, kind of like well, what I got. The, the voice note sound is New York, but I gotta find out what's going on. But I'm saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call some, somebody else's phone, because I don't want my phone, because you know, I use this phone for work. Right. And, 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 and the thing is, it's like somebody crank calling me. Right, listen, one thing is it's either maybe that person will want to meet someone and talk to them about what their issue is, or I want to ask you. No, the they're going to have an issue because um, you don't just go threatening people throwing out me. Well, they're, they're saying that I'm, that I'm helping a Katie, or not me, but my family's helping a Katie and her family and some other guy that's named again with a T that I've never, I'm like, dude, I've never met any of these people. He goes, well, you're not, but the family has been, and they've been helping him, out, uh, her and her family. And you like, haven't met, but then they're, like, it makes more sense. But, but, but he's like, he's like, if he asked me who I was, and I was like, none of your business. So I was almost, well, in hindsight, what I should have said was, who, because I have a big, because this is a big family and there's lots of cousins. Yeah. Who, who am I, because the Adelson family is a big family. Yeah. So what I should have said to the guys, who in my family, who in the Eagleson family uh -huh. owes somebody money? Give me the name. Yeah, of course. Give me the name, and then I will go to that person in that family and say, who did you not pay? I want to know the name. I want to know the name. The only name they keep throwing out is that this that this Eagleson family is helping out Katie and some guy named T and their family, and this guy needs your help, and it's not right, and he's like, this problem's not going away. He goes, this is not going away. He's not okay, that's what's bad right there. That's right. the fuck like, up that you're not helping. So, like, who the fuck are you? Or the fuck I'm, like, who so are you? Listen, that's like me calling someone up and being like, yeah, I know you fell JFK. Um, you pay me. Okay, well, guess what? You didn't kill JFK. That's the wrong example. Like, what does that have to do with anything? I'm well, dead. My, my point is that, well, that's because, look, well, because JFK died in 1963. And you were born then. My point is, is that I had nothing to do with any of this craziness. I want to know who, do, who in my family owes somebody money because I'm going to go to that person and say, "What's going on?" And that's uh, what I'm. That's the, not, the next conversation I have with this person is is going to be, 
me, if, if it comes to it, me saying, who owes money? If someone owes money, you gotta give me a name. Not yeah, me. exactly. Tell me, me who do I have? Where do you want to be? My mom, who are my you? mom, my mom doesn't know who any of these people are. My yeah, dad I want to doesn't know who any of these people are. Whoever this fucking person is, trying to fucking say shit or do whatever it is to your family, starting to harass your family, like it's getting me mad. So well, I, mean, I don't know, I don't know why they keep bringing up um, people who I've never met. I don't, that's why it's like, who are you? Number one, okay, you need something, who are you then? What's your real name? What's your address? Who do you have a problem with? Yeah, who, who in my family owes you money? And don't say the last name because I'm going to go to that person and tell them, if you owe this person money, what is it about, number one? And, and then I'm going to tell them, go pay them. But exactly. you can't tell me who to go talk to. Not like, oh, somebody with the last name Adelson. Well, guess what? That's like saying someone with the last and name calling of, your of Rodriguez. Like, yeah, that? someone with the last name Rodriguez. So it's like, well, give me the fucking first name. And I will go talk to, if it was my brother who was behind it, I'm going to fucking find out. I mean, fine, with my brother, I'll try to make a reward money. My brother's a piece of shit. So I'm saying, like, give me the name of who owes your friend, friend's family money. And this guy said to me, he said, listen, I was with him up in Broward. I knew everything that went on. I was up yeah. with him in Broward. That's what I'm something talking about. about yeah, something about I Broward. I was up with him in Broward, too. What? I don't know if some guy he's talking about. Number, but he sent his oh. family member. He said he was somebody incarcerated. No. He said it was this, that guy's Kuko or whatever his brother. He said, I'm his brother. I was with him up in Broward when he told me what everything that happened. That's exactly what he said. up with him in Broward and told me I don't know what he was that I don't know if he was well, in jail with him, visiting in jail. I don't know if he was in He needs to, like, fucking, if, like, if people just can be fucking Googling shit or whatever it is. Well, and that's, and well, exactly. But the only reason I'm going to bother calling you is wanted to talk about you. Or if I was the wrong person, then I would feel even more. But like, this person doesn't matter. Like, you're still harassing my fucking family. And I wanted to stop. I mean, when you, show, when you meet someone face-to-face on the street, when you send them a letter, and then when you start calling their office, the next call is to the FBI. Exactly. No, and, I agree. And I my thing is this. Go there. I don't, I don't want anyone to go to jail because you know what? People get mad when they go to jail and they feel like they have to get somebody back. Same reason when, when my jet ski got stolen, I did not, I don't even care who fucking stole. Okay. Next, we've got a text, MM. Who is this to and who is it from? It's to Catherine McDaniel from Sigfredo Garcia. Did he... <coughs> Call three times to the undercover? Do we know? No, we don't believe so. He only received one missed call. Okay. Next we have NN Magbanawa to the defendant. Can we publish NN, please? Spanish, the other is Kuko. So Kuko, Kuko is like, 
Well, my language is, you know, it is like a fool. <laughs> but supposedly that voicemail that they have set up, it's the guy says puto, what sounds like puto. And then what, is, what does he say on the voicemail? Like it's something in Spanish. And you read puto, and it's in Spanish. So he has a message in Spanish.
And that's why for nobody picking up the phone now is like frustrating me. Like, there was no voicemail before, now there is. Now there is. The next phone call is going to be the freaking. It's not going to be good to be awake. No matter what yeah. way it ends, it's not going to be good for whoever is messing around. No. I mean, it's. That's it. And listen, I don't want, I don't want to. I don't, want, I don't want any problems. Imagine, like, look at this. I'm not taking somebody else's, you know? Like, I don't even know what kind of phone call is going on. Like, I'm not going to be able to do that. And listen, the last thing I want to do is have some guy, I, the last thing I want to do is have some guy who's trying to score money, go to jail, and then feel like he's sitting in jail because of me. Like, no, like, fucking just leave us alone. I'm not looking to send people to jail. That's so not how I live life. I didn't even, it's, but it's going to happen if this guy keeps doing that. He's, the police will get involved, we'll get in trouble. Of course. You know, that's that's right. Right. Like, you, you should be calling somebody's business. It's wrong with people. Well, you can't be sending letters. You can't be showing up on the well, screen. Exactly. Like, I when I'm going to... That's right. It's like, 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 I'll tell the person, hey, do you need a name of someone in this family that owes you money? Because it's I'm going to go, I'm gonna go pay them a visit. Give me a name. Is it my brother? Is it and, Robert? And, and, like, and I'll take care of it. Yeah, and I, I will see that if someone owes somebody money, they will pay, but you got to give me a name because you're talking to the wrong people. You're not and, you're and not frankly, other people speaking yeah, to I'm, well, I'm, who are you? Hey, I have cousins. I've got a huge family. I got, I got in here. I keep it like, you know, there's punches. There's here everything, and I'm not very Do you want me to, do you want me to try and meet up with you, or do you want me to just leave it for you to pick up tomorrow? Um, yeah. If you can. Do you want me to try and meet up with you? I, I want to, I want to if you can, but if you can, you know, I'll call you when I get out of here. Okay, I was just going to work out. Yeah, I know what I'm trying to do because like, I can't. I have to go on and see it. I can't. Go, go work out and call me. And, then I'll and I'm not going to have to work out. Am I going to do what? And I'm not even going to have to work out. And then I'm going to I'm going to move. Hold your sister's hand. Hold your sister's hand. Do the practice. Hold on one time. Don't ever let her walk on your top. You know that. You know that is that. Okay. All right. Hit me up. It's okay, Gabby. Meet you or you'll pick it up tomorrow. Okay, we'll go. I'll call you okay. in like an hour. This is like an hour. Okay, call, call me okay. in an hour. Bye. Right, next we have OO. Well, we publish OO on all 40 minutes. No, sir. I've got three segments picked out for a total of. 20 ish minutes. Please continue. Hey, what's going on? Good, good. Uh, working out. Okay. Is it a long your plan? Yeah. So. What's happening this afternoon? Uh, no. Nothing there. But I did, uh, I, I'd rather not talk to him. Yeah, okay. So, um, tomorrow I was going to tell you that, um, actually, Dad is going to start with it right now. And I'm almost finished, but she came up with a bonus suggestion. I was calling her that tomorrow. Um, my book is that we have um, a good ticket to get to my brother's beauty and wine um, festival. And so we have tickets, I think it's supposed to be from, I think we're in the Chum 30th night, so it's going to go six to Chum Street on my brother. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, so like I said, I should bring the food to the courthouse 
on our way because oh he won't get there at any at any time that I should actually um reserve variable parking it's like parking by the Riverside Hotel, I think they said, and parking um by in a in the garage by the Tecano. Dugan. Silence the devices. Please check your devices, place them on silent or turn them off. Please continue.
the birthday gift for a married man with kids. What is Sigfredo Garcia's birthday? Um, I believe it's like April 27th. And on what date was this call RR placed? It was on 429-16. All right, so his birthday was two days prior? Correct. Okay, I want to skip ahead to May 4th of 2016. Did we have another bump on that date? We did. Okay, tell us about that. Um, that one was a text message from the undercover to Donna Adelson. We can publish that message. I'm sorry? I don't think it's an I'm not objecting to it. Hmm. This wasn't in it? Oh, it is because it's on the wire disk. Okay. Like all the text. Okay. Sorry, Judge. Sausage being made. Um. Okay, so if you'll read this text for us. This was sent from the undercover to Donna Adelson? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. So you don't take me serious. You think I'm playing. You have some puta call me to see if I'm for real. If you think what Katie, ba baby, daddy did for you can't come back, you're fucking crazy. I want the money now or I'm going after the 100K. Okay, can we play SS, please? Is $100,000 significant in this case? Yes. Why is that? Um, that's what was on the flyer about a reward. I'm oh, sorry? That's what was on the flyer regarding a reward. Thank you. All right, so not the flyer that we've seen in this case, but something that was put out to the public? It was, and I believe it was also on the same flyer that was handed to her by the undercover. Meaning it was mentioned in that article, or? I believe so. Okay, I understand. Okay. You see what was in there at all? No, what the fuck did you put in there? Where's that bag? I haven't opened it. Where is it? It's in my first one. Like in my own place, I didn't look at another guy. So you haven't opened up the public space? No. Why? Where is it? I'll open it later. Okay. Here you go. No, it's, it's not like I put a fucking answer in there. Well, please do that. I don't want to open the guy. I got him a guinea pig for his birthday. He's been in there for three weeks in your trunk. Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, I gotta get him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay. It was supposed to be a birthday present for somebody. If you know okay. it's his birthday. And he's still going on, so. Okay. Well, I, would it be okay if he told it was for me or do you think that's a bad idea? Um, I don't know. Well, Take a look and then you can tell me. Open the button and say, there's a very nice gift card in there. Okay. It's okay. You're fucking in here, though. I know. You know what he said? He told me, oh my God, that's so bad. Like, he's like, look, well, because my mom always, always gets him a present, right? And he took us out, but she always took him out for, for dinner and shit, whatever. My mom always does that, like, for him. Um... And he told me, he was like, well, maybe you'll ever get to your present, because I knew you'd get a little present. <laughs> I said, maybe you'll ever get to your present. I'm like, well, you're not making a doll anymore, and I get over it. All right, let's move on to TT, please. Hello? 
the drugs we find, um, let them get started on it, and it is, if you don't think it'll cause anything, you can tell them this is from the uh, when you open up the present. Okay. Remember the person who said Can you I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to open it now before, I don't know, if you scaring me. Okay. Um, I'm going to put it in your car or is it in your house? It's in my house. But I, I get it. Well, go fucking look what's in there and okay. tell me if it's, if it's okay for his birthday present. Okay. All right. Where's my birthday present? You get nothing. Uh, All right, I'll talk to you later. You got you, I got you tickets to the concert. I know. Thank you. I'd like to thank you. Where's my birthday? It's not your birthday, then. Wait, you wait yeah. here first. Whatever. Yeah, it's uh, I would feel better. It's your other goddaughter. It's your goddaughter's birthday then. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can't all these people that want me to adopt them. No, well, you already know my kids. I got, like six, I got like 60 year old women in offices asking me, saying, Where's your kids? They got their mask and they go, You adopt me. I'll give you the Father's Day car. Fucking amazing. I got Daddy wants to be adopted. I got like eight people that want to be adopted. I want to be a doctor. I don't 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 want to be
Okay. Anyway, um, so where we're at. Um, wait, wait, what don't you say? Okay, the right thing to look at. Yeah. Anyway, um, so where, where we're at. Um, wait, wait, but look, you didn't even want me over to check where I'm going to have to send in. She said, no, I think you should. And I was like, I'm not even going to do it. You're not going to argue with a lot of people. Exactly. Um, so instead of like taking 500, you may take a little less and then, and then just give it to him twice. But definitely give him it as soon as you get in. Get it in him and then give it to him Does again. Does he have a like, waiver? Uh, Do they ask you? No, it's like, uh, no, they don't have a waiver. But it, just give him a fucking teaspoon and be like, fucking swallow it. I know. This is the biggest baby about it. All right. So, I know. I know. I know. Swallow it or fucking smack his ass. We're telling you to be pain. If you, 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 if Give them like the liquid. Give them yeah. the liquid. And then. No, but I'm saying like, I've been giving them Tylenol. I just have an emotion. So I'm going to get another bottle of motion to let it finish. Just give them give motion, not Tylenol. You can do it either way. But this is the ibuprofen, the motion with the amoxicillin, I'll be feeling so much better tomorrow. Okay. But it really takes, so well. you have to have it in your system for 24 hours for it to really. Check on him and all of it. Um, this is not good. No. Alright. Okay. Benadryl. You can always, I, mean, I hate doing it, but you can always take a quarter of your bar and, I know. and break it and then break it into if another. If I quarter. had, I swear it's another thing. If I had, I would. Like you, would, you the whole family would be on fucking Xanax. Why don't you just blow some weed in his face? No, I'm kidding. No, uh, why are you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But no, but I got um, he's got he's got the drugs. He's fine. Um, <laughs> let him get started on it, and it is. If you don't think it'll cause anything, you can tell him it was for me. The uh, when you open up the present. Okay. Remember the person He's who said me. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, open it now before. I don't know. Because he's carrying me. Was it in your car or is it your house? It was my home. But I, I hit it. Go, go fucking look what's in there, and tell okay. me if it's okay, if it's okay for his birthday present. Okay. All right. Where's my birthday present? You get nothing. Ah. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. You got I got you tickets to the concert. I know. Thank you. I like to thank you. Where's your birthday then? Wait, you wake up first. Whatever. Yeah, it's right. not your birthday. I would feel better. It's your other goddaughter. It's your goddaughter's birthday then the one. Oh yeah. I can't all these people that want me to adopt them. No, well you already know my kids. I got, like six, I got like 60 year old women in offices asking me, saying, Where's your kid? And they got her happy and they go, Can you stop me? I'll give you the Father's Day card. Fucking amazing. I got Scotty wants to see these doctors. I got like eight people that want to see the doctors. I want to be a doctor. You don't want to adopt me. Adopt me. I don't want to adopt me. You do a little love. I was like, God, Father. All right. Thank you. Okay, I think we can move on now to you, you.
for any of the money lent and will be paid back. Mm. It's very interesting. So that's, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's really how people make a lot of money is using other people's money <coughs> to, to make it. Oh, sure. It's a great village. So, we'll see. I mean, Alex says it, it would be a track record that's two years. It'll be, it will not be a problem raising capital at all. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's good stuff. So, are you going to be waiting out of the chair? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, is everything else like that? Yeah. Is Teresa saying this? Um, just saying. Yeah, I think you're going to get. Did you see somebody today, or was it? Mm-hmm. That was different, but I will. I'll see you on Sunday, looks like. You don't want to come down and see me tonight? No. Was it mad or was it? No, no. I'll just say, you know, see you on Sunday. So you know. I know, you like, I could kind of talk to you, but like, you know, when I talk to you and you're not giving like appropriate responses? Yeah. So like, my like, memories, it just seems like it's other, like, uh. Yeah. Did, uh, did someone bother Wendy? Not yet. <coughs> what do you think they will? <coughs> well, I don't know. Let's talk. Well, I think it's important that you see me before Sunday. Well, where exactly is it going to be tomorrow? That is off tomorrow, so maybe we can get a chance to meet. I don't think that's very good to do. Well, I'm, I'm meeting Doug in the afternoon. I haven't texted, uh, I haven't, I haven't texted Adam yet. Yeah, it's supposed to be him at some point. But just, I mean, I can, I can set up a meeting with him at any time. I mean, do you want to pull up to my house in the morning? Or? Mm-hmm. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, I don't want to wait. Yeah, I agree. And then you wait, and something that could have been in the bud early becomes uh becomes something that yeah. doesn't get there in the butt early and then it snowballs out of control. Yeah, so maybe tomorrow um maybe up early. So what we got we can get me for breakfast or something around you want to meet sure with the breakfast chocolate? Yeah. Um, you want us to come to you, right? Um, uh, well, traffic is, I, I could, let me find out. Check your schedule and then we'll work something out, okay? Then? Yeah, let me, let me do that and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Sounds good. Um, was, um, let's, let's, yeah, let's discuss that on two channels. I mean, I think it's just better that things get in the car early. Yeah. I don't know why you would have just fallen with it up. Um, good reason. Let me, let me talk to you tomorrow. You figure out your schedule. We're free until, you know, until we have to pick up the kids. So, we'll what walk time? around. It's apparent some other contact has occurred. Is this timing of this call consistent with that being from the text bump that we saw a few moments ago? Yes, it's it's the, the same day, the afternoon of when it happened. And the text bump indicates I want the money now or I'm going after the 100K, right? Correct. The 100K, you said it was a reward. A reward for what? Reward for information leading to... Um, the investigation leading to the arrest of uh, the killer for Dan Markell. And at any time, does Donna or anyone in this case text the undercover and say, do that? No, they didn't. Go get the reward. Solve the case. Nope, they did not. All right, so let's go to the next day. What do we decide about the
sign to W W. Hey Charlie. Hey, how are you? Good, honey. How are you doing? Good. I'm coming across the bridge now. Oh, okay. Okay, wonderful. Well, you, want to come down? you know what? I'll meet you. We'll meet you outside, and we can walk to the pool area. All right, sounds good. Okay. All right. I'll okay. Be okay. Thank you. Bye. XX, I missed an item on our sheet, meeting at pool. What does that refer to? Um, Charlie Adelson met with his parents at the Icon. We tried to cover it, sent some, agents, sent some agents in to try to record, but they could not get close enough to them. Where did the meeting occur? Um, it occurred like in the pool area inside the Icon. All right, so they were... The three of them sat down at the pool area and had a chat, or something yeah. else. Yeah, apparently they were in a like a private pool area inside the building. Um, they were in the pool area by themselves talking. Okay. All right. Sorry, I missed that. Let's jump forward to why why. Okay, 
Well, like trying to find my son is like I, I don't even know where he is. Just look, look for the oh, right. monkey, monkey bars. Yeah, probably him, right? Okay, just give me a quick recap because um, I, like what exactly on the time? Um, and I'm not asking you to to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. At all. Oh, hi, baby. Yeah, come on, come on. Yes, you got to put an appointment. Uh, go ahead. The, the person's there. So you, so you don't take me serious. You want to go to the bus? And you, you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, the person says, so you don't take me serious, and you have some puta calling up baby, Katie's baby daddy. So... And then it was like, so you don't know, so you don't, or something, and then there was something about it for you. Uh -huh. And then there was something about, like, you don't, you don't respect what was done for you or something like that. You don't respect? Or you don't, no, you don't, it was, it was like, it was, it was like 20 words. It started off and so you don't think I'm serious. And then it was... You have some He's at home on the phone. Huh? Katie. Go, come on me. Yeah. I'm so, so, so you don't take me serious, and you have some puja call me up, Katie's baby daddy. Uh, you don't, like, you don't appreciate what was done for you or something like that. All right. And that was it. That was it. It just ended. All right. But it, it, it came from that same number, the person didn't block the number they're texting from. Yeah, yeah, no, we already got to that. We got to that yeah. point already. I got you. So don't, uh -huh. don't do right. anything. And I, I have a thing, you know, it's one of two things. And I I could care less. I just want the person to stop harassing me. Go, go on the phone. Okay, oh got you. But I, I, evidently, evidently, if you're, whoever called, Mm -hmm. the person, the person give a shot. No, I had a, I had a, I had a friend that called, but... Yeah, well, whoever it was that called, this, this person texted my mom at 2 o'clock in the morning, could really give a shit. Now he's referencing... Katie, he's, he referenced, the only person's name he referenced in the text was Katie's baby daddy. Yeah. So... Uh-huh, I'm accusing you that. I had to use that. No, it's really not the baby daddy. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the weird thing is, whoever it is, could really give a shit about what was said to him. Because he has no problem continuing to send text messages from that number. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the part. That's the part that really boggles my mind. Yep. So well, don't, don't do anything. Not afraid, obviously. Somebody has a no, or something. Some, somebody that can no get all of this information. This is I mean, the personal phone, phone calls, uh, a text, somebody, you know, like, it's, it's, it's a lot. Okay, but this is my, this is my one fear. Uh -huh. Nobody can protect somebody all the time. If it's a 1% chance that it is a bad guy who did something bad, you know, I learned about my dad's safety going to an office where nah, nah, you just, you, bro. you don't have to like that's that's what fall out of me like and they go both like no yeah yeah that's what right? you know and, and if whoever it is the reference is to me you don't think i'm scared yeah and whoever it is like whatever whoever calls the person you know, but like, like i got I, no he, no, he called him a food dog that becomes even more of like what are you doing now? Like, is, it, is, is somebody that's waiting for you to be like, hey, like, how do you love me? Like, or, well, like, somebody trying to, like, mess with you, maybe you're hurting me. Like, we just seem alive. It becomes much more of, like, damn, he's a friend. Like, what is, what is going on? And then if they do, they, they're throwing a lot of information out that I don't know. So, that's, which is crazy. The question is, where did they get it from? And, why don't we just go collect the reward of whoever has the information? Exactly. All right. All right. right. We're, we're yeah. saying the same thing we're kind of doing, and it's just it's gotcha. getting to the point where it's like... Well, so don't, don't do anything. 
I just don't, uh, this is just aggravation, that's all. I just want my family left alone, you know. So that's, that's my day. Hopefully I have a day off so we can hang out with everybody and deal with nonsense. Right. So. Right. Like I try to remember so many and it's so hard because we still always so many other details behind it that it's like when I have to like think it out of my head, like I'm all over the place because like we just talk so much more of what's not necessary. No, I know. I know. I would do that. We go off on tangents and shit. I just listen. You're just my friend. That's the only reason why I'm going to. I know. It's so, pissing me off because it's like I don't even know. Like you know, I'm me. I'm trying to help you out and figure out like, what the hell is going on. So. I, I wish. Right. I wish I knew what was going on. A lot of fucking crazy people out there. Goodbye, everyone. Alright, good, good luck with his uh, endo appointment. I'm call him if I don't like the end anything. Yeah. Okay, we'll okay. Alright, I'll talk to you. Okay, next we have a text. AAA. Can we publish that, please? And if you'll tell us about this text. This text is from it's from Catherine uh, McManwa to Sigfredo Garcia. What does it say? It says, call me if you can step out of the office for a second. Okay. Play BBB, please. Anybody should go through that. 
And it's funny, like, how do you get, you know, it's just calling his mom, like, not calling anybody else, but like, yeah, you can get, you can look it up or whatever, but it's pretty great. You know, yeah. number. Hmm? Yeah, it's pretty it really great. So, I just don't like, you know, the fact that my name is being thrown out and baby daddy is being thrown out, like, what is all that? Yeah, I know. I don't know nothing about it. So, uh, how does it serve? Did you pick up Ethan? Yeah, honey. Okay, so we were on May 5th. Let's go to May 6th. On May 6th, th does Donna Adelson call the undercover? Yes. How many times does she call the undercover? Um, I believe maybe three times. Okay. She does she leave a voicemail one time? I believe so. How many times does she actually have a conversation with the undercover? Just once. All right. And judge that call is on States Exhibit 107. Move to publish that call at this time. You may. <coughs> Hello. This is this is Mrs. Adelson. Is this um, Hello. Sammy? Sammy. Okay. My grandchildren had my phone before, so um, I. Senora Adelson. I'm Mrs. Adelson. My yes. Yes. Yeah. My grandchildren yes. had my phone before, so that's and I just saw that you called. So okay. I was, I, you, I was, you left the message on my on my voicemail. Right. I did. No. <laughs> this is my problem. You approached me on Alton Road. You handed me an article from the newspaper about my ex-son-in-law. You told me I need to call you and help your friend who was in prison. Now, at the time you did that, I didn't understand what you were talking about. I didn't call you back. Then you mailed me a threatening letter. Then you send me a text message to my phone that says I'm not taking you seriously. So I am taking you seriously. And I really want you to listen to me. I, I, listen. I have to tell you, I mean, this is important. I, I have been so stressed out. I have spoken to 10 or 12 people who are close friends of mine, telling them about this and basically picking their brains and asking them what I should do because I don't know your friend who is in jail. I don't, I, you, you mentioned a name. I don't even know his name. I never spoke to him. I don't know what he looks like. I've never met him. I, I'm sorry your friend's in jail, but I don't know what that has to do with me. Do, do, you know what you know exactly what it has to do with you you uh, know exactly what listen to me carefully listen listen to me listen to me you, you got you, you just got you just got to listen to me you need to ask your friends who this person looks like what their name is something because i know there's a big reward out there and if you need money for your friends that's the way to get it I mean, I'm asking you nicely. I don't know who he is. I am out of the loop. It is not me. If I can help, I would help. I mean, I, I, that's what just I, like I told, like Just like I friend. told you, listen to me. Just like I told you that day, we know what, we know that, that your family had a problem up north. We know that that problem was taken care of about a year and a half, two years ago. And we know that Katie had been taken care of. And has been taken care of. Now, now my brother, my brother in in jail. He, we were in Broward together. He told me the whole thing, and he hasn't been taken care of. You know. Now, all, 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 we're, all, all that's being asked for is five five k. That's all we're asking for is for five k. And he, I, he told me everything, and I know everything. I know who's involved. I know everything, and I, I I'll, I'll, I'll get the hundred k for myself. You know, I'm, all I ask is to send a 5K. Everybody knows what's going on. 
I don't, you know, you're saying everyone knows. I know I lost my ex-son-in-law. I did not have anything to do with it. That's why I said, ask him what that's, the person that's what, that's not, that's not, that's what not my, my brother Tasso told me. He told me everything when we were in jail. He told me everything oh. and who was involved. I know everything. Well, I don't. That's the problem. I am telling you, it's not me. Not me. I have had a year of aggravation, a year and a half of aggravation over this. My my daughter, my grandchildren. It is not me. And when I asked my friends, what do they think? They said, well, this person needs to get a description of you because of what you look like. Or it's not me. I don't know who caused this. It wasn't me. I mean. I, uh -huh. I don't know I'll tell you, just, 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 just like that day when I talked to you, this is not going away. This is not going to go away. The Tato told me everything. He wasn't being taken care of. He needed the 5K. Sent 5K. That's all, that's all we were asking for. But, yeah. but don't, don't do that. I don't know who Tato is. You don't understand. I, we know you don't know who Tato is, but you know who Katie is. And you know the context Katie has, and she has, listen to me, let's stop fucking around. Let's stop fucking around. <coughs> okay? You know who Katie is. And you know that Katie has somebody that knows Tato. And they, and they took care of a problem for you people. That's just the bottom line. The bottom line is you know, you know who the fuck Katie is. Look, I don't. I, I'm no more, no more than Mr. No, I, I'm not fucking. I'm not fucking around with it. You know who Katie is. You know that they took care of Katie and her people. Nobody's taking care of Tato. You, I know you don't know who Tato is. No, I but we know. We know who all of you are. And this ain't going away. You know what? So I can give you that. If you want then the five K. Here's what you need to do. You need to go and... Don't, I don't tell me what to do. I know what to do and I'm doing it. You're looking for money. Get a hundred thousand dollars or whatever the, the, what do you call it? Whatever the reward is. It isn't me. You have got the wrong person. That's why I said ask your friends. Your you're Donna, you're, you're Donna Adelson. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, I know. We know. Who's involved in all this? Yes, this is not making any sense. I mean, if you want the money, you should get it from the police. They can give you a whole lot more than than, than you're asking me for money for someone. I I, I just I, I can't I can't do this. I have had too much stress and too much aggravation from this, and I don't know what you are talking about. I just don't. No, I just don't know. Good. I think you should talk to Katie. Talk to talk to you people that are involved in this. You'll know. You know who. You know what's going on. That's why I'm. You can tell me. That. You know that You can tell me all you fucking want, but I know you know. Because I know, because I heard. I, when I was locked up in Broward with my with my brother, that's what he told me everything. Everything. He told me everything. Well, then it, I just it, wanted to take no. care of him because because fucking Katie was being taken care of with her fucking food. I just think I just think instead of asking me, you should get the money from the police. There's a, a lot of money out there, and I know if you think you know who this is, then then go ahead and do it because I know it isn't me. I know it isn't me. And I can't take this kind of level of stress. I just can't. I know I didn't do anything. You talk, to, you talk to people. Tell, you talk to the right people. You talk to people. You make this 5K come to me. That's all I need. Just do it and get it to me. Do it and get it to me. I'll call you back. Okay, so here we have Donna making the call. 
Correct. And she refers the undercover to get the reward, to the police to get the reward, right? Yes. And then does she also report these incidents and what's been happening to law enforcement at that time? No, ma'am. Does anybody report these incidents and what's been happening and the, the stalking and harassment that's been going on? Does anybody report that to law enforcement? No, not at all. Do we have any evidence that Donna Adelson recorded that call with the undercover? Yes. Okay, let's go to CCC, please. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. So I'm saying I'm working. She's outside of uh, outside of Johnny Oh, go ahead. Sure. But I'm a, I will do this. I will wait, take the boat out. Even if my friends are here when you're here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go sit in the car with you and we'll and go to the case as long as that has the models. Yeah, I think it's a not forget the tan pieces I can get. No, I know. I know. I've got them all packed up ready. I will right, see you great. tomorrow. Love you. Okay, if we could go to the next day, May 7th, 2016. I'm sorry, that's the same day. Uh, we're going from 11. Have I gone to the next day? Yes, okay, I'm sorry. DDD is what I'm trying to go to. to as pigs yes that's correct and this was the last call that I included are there several more discussing how sure he is that it is in fact law enforcement after reviewing this call from the mo that the mother made yes okay and in this call he says it's fantastic is there a lot of enthusiastic talk about the, that realization. Yes, by him. Yes. Could we show states 59, please? Oh, okay. Sorry, 
right, anywhere on the wire did the defendant talk about the bump, the interactions with law enforcement, bumps, I should say, with anyone other than Catherine Magbanawa or Donna Adelson? Um, possibly just his father. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about um, Catherine Magbanawa? Does she talk to anyone other than the defendant and Sigfredo Garcia? about the bump or the bumps? No, that's the only two. Okay. And even after the, the hundred and thousand percent fantastic realization that this was just law enforcement fishing, does anybody go to law enforcement and report what had happened? No, they don't. No further questions. Cross examination. Thank you. We meet again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Your investigation revealed that Luis Rivera used burner phones in connection with this murder, right? Um, he used one during the murder, yes. That he threw away, right? Uh, we don't know what he did with the actual phone, but he quit using it after the murder. Okay. Um, Sigfredo used burner phones as well, right? Uh, we're aware of him using one during the murder, too. And you heard about on the wire uh, that he was going to use a burner phone, right? He was going to go get a burner phone. He talked about getting rid of his phone after he used it. Right. Correct. And so did Catherine McDaniel, right? I don't remember her saying she was going to get rid of the phone, no. Do you recall Sigfredo Garcia telling Catherine McDaniel on the wires, we need to go get new phones? They did go get new phones eventually after the, we interviewed them. They went to Walmart to buy two phones, right? Correct. After we had, I interviewed Sigfredo and she was attempted to be interviewed. Correct. After Sigfredo Garcia was arrested, uh, Catherine McVanoa only used her, to your knowledge, her burner phone, right? No, she still used both phones, but she used them in very limited capacity. There's no evidence that Charlie Adelson ever used a burner phone, right? Not that we've not that we were able to establish. During the wires, he always used the same phone, correct? The cell phone. Correct, with, with WhatsApp. Fair enough. There's no evidence that he ever went and bought a burner phone, right? I have not collected that evidence of a burner phone. We did have witnesses that we interviewed make reference to him having more than one phone, but we never were able to establish that. Never were able to corroborate that, right? No. And in fact, when he was arrested eight years after the murder, six years after everyone else was arrested, he had the same phone number, right? I believe he did. Okay. 
He used that same phone number for more than a decade, right? That's roughly correct, yes. Okay. Now, the day before Sigfredo Garcia's arrest, law enforcement went to his place of work and tried to interview him, right? That's correct, I did. Did you say you did? Yes, sir. And you believe that he lied during the interview, obviously, right? Yes, sir. Now, at the same time that Sigfredo Garcia was being interviewed, other law enforcement went to the place where they were living, him and Katie, uh, and knocked on the door and tried to interview her, right? That's correct. And she hid, right? She did. And you know she hid because you heard on the wires that she was making calls to a lot of people, right? That's correct. On all the people that she was calling on the wires, she never calls Charlie Adelson, right? When she's hiding. During, while she's hiding just during that hour long scenario, I don't believe she did, but I was in Miami, I wasn't monitoring the wire then. But you have put in all the wires here, so you've reviewed them, right? Yes, long time ago. And in reviewing the wires, Will you take my representation that she called three people and none of them were Charlie Adelson? Sure, that sounds accurate. And from the calls that you have reviewed and listened on the wires, it was obvious to her, in fact, she said it on the calls, that the police were outside her house, right? Correct. So if she testified before this jury that she had no idea the police were outside her house because they didn't announce themselves, that would be a lie, right? I believe at the beginning she might not have known, but by the end of it, I believe she did know, yes. Okay. Fair to say at some point when she was hiding in the house, she knew that the FBI and the police, maybe not the FBI, but she knew that law enforcement were at her front door, right? Yes, I believe she did. Okay. The next day when Sigfre Sigfredo Garcia was arrested the next day, right? That's correct, the next evening. And when he was arrested... Catherine McBanawa left her townhouse and never with the kids and never came back, right? No, that's incorrect. That's incorrect? She, she, she went back to live in that townhouse? No, she, she didn't live in that house the night after we conducted the interview of Sigfredo. Okay. Uh, then she left? Yes. Okay, and she never came back? Correct. Fair enough. Law enforcement didn't know where she was for a while, right? Correct. She was keeping her phones off. We, we knew she was still in the state of Florida, but it would give us a brief indication. And then, yes, we didn't know where she was at all times, for sure, or exact location. You were worried that she had fled, right? I wasn't worried she fled the state. I knew she had turned her phone off and was eluding us. Did Charlie Adelson turn off his phone after the arrest? No, he just stopped using it for quite a significant period. Um, quit using it regularly, I should say. Aren't there a lot of calls after the arrest between Charlie Adelson on his phone? Of insignificance, just like work calls and things like that. Fair enough. Right. But I, I want to make sure the jury understands. He continued to use his phone, right? He did, in a different capacity, in my opinion. But he continued to use his phone, Special Agent, right? Yes, sir, he did. He didn't get a new phone. Not that we know of. He didn't change his number. Correct. He went to work. Correct. He didn't flee his house. Not that we know of, no. Well, when you arrested him six years later, was he in the same house? He was that night, yes. Okay. You say that night. Or that I mean, morning. Had he been living in that house pretty much continually for the next six years? I'm aware that he had a couple of different houses. Um, I'm not sure if he, I don't know if he stayed in that house all the time or not because I didn't keep tabs on him every day. Okay, fair enough. But when you went to arrest him, you knew where to go, right? We found him there, yes. And you knew where to go because that was his main residence, right? Correct. It was still his residence of and some that had, record. That had been his residence for the entire time since 2014, correct? I'm not saying he didn't have other residences, but that was the place where he primarily lived, correct? He still owned the house, I believe, on his driver's license. He had a different address. He changed it. Okay. Now, it was made public, the arrest of uh, Rivera and Sigfredo in May 2015, correct? Uh, 2016, correct? 
Correct. Right after his uh, right after his arrest. Correct. And Charlie Adelson didn't flee. Not that I know of. Well, you didn't have to go on a manhunt for him, right? Not years later. We didn't look for him immediately right then. Uh, there were news reports, 2020 primetime specials in September 2016. He didn't flee. Correct. Not that I'm aware of. There was a probable cause affidavit leaked to the media in September 2016. Are you aware of that? I am aware of it, yes. And that probable cause affidavit was over 20 pages long? I don't recall if that sounds right. It was very detailed? It was. Much of the evidence that came in this courtroom in the last week was in that report, right? That's correct. And it was against Charlie Adelson, right? Some of it was, yes. And when that was released, he didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of. Catherine McBannerwell was arrested in October 2016, right? Correct. He didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of, no. Sigfredo Garcia was convicted at trial in 2019. Charlie Adelson didn't flee, right? That's correct. The state announced its intention to retry Catherine Magbanoa after the jury hung in 2019. Again, he didn't flee, right? Not that I'm aware of. And in the months leading up to her trial, he didn't flee, correct? Correct. Now, he did travel out of the country many times, right? I believe so, yes. And he traveled to some places where extradition is, at least we could say, difficult. Could be. Did he? Special Agent, we were talking about the places he went to where extradition was tough. He always came back, right? Yes. Now, during the course of your investigation, did you review uh, text messages between Katie and Charlie? Yes. And did you learn that Katie wanted a longer, deeper relationship with Charlie as time went on? I don't know if I recall that. There was a lot of back and forth. Though. Fair enough. Did you learn that Charlie didn't feel the same way? Um, I don't know if I recall that either. Did you see text messages where he said, I don't want to get married, I don't want two kids, to that effect? Possibly. That I mean, it, it's probably in there somewhere. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between him and other females that I could be getting confused. Do you recall him talking to a friend in text messages, talking about a trip he was going to take with Katie in the early in the early to mid summer before the murder, where he told his friend it's the goodbye tour? Um, that sounds familiar. Did you learn that Katie and Charlie broke up within weeks after the murder? No, uh, my understanding was possibly right around the time of the murder. I'm not sure the exact timing of it, though. Fair enough. Now, we listen to a lot of calls. Katie lies to Charlie when she told him that she would call the undercover, right? Correct. She lied to Charlie when she told him that she called the undercover and there was no answer. Correct. She lied to the under, she lied to Charlie 
when she told him that the undercover number was a non-working number, right? Correct. Non-working number would be like in the old days where it goes beep, right? That's my understanding. Okay. She lied to Charlie when she said she called the undercover and got an answering machine. When she called the undercover. Correct. She, she was not the one to make the call. Correct. She lied to Charlie when she said she left a threatening message. She left a threatening message. Correct. On the undercover's voicemail. Correct. By the way, Sigfredo Garcia may have called the voicemail, but he didn't leave any message, right? No, that's correct. He did not. He didn't leave a threatening last message. No. Another lie by, Char by, Kate, by Katie to Charlie, correct? Correct. Or by Sigfredo, one of the two. After her conviction... Catherine McBanawa was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole, right? Correct. And about a month after she was sentenced, she decided she wanted to cooperate. I don't know the timing of it. Fair enough. At some point after her sentencing, she wanted to cooperate, right? Correct. And she met with law enforcement uh, at least twice. You were there two times. That's correct. And you met for hours. Um, I wouldn't, the first time I think was probably less than an hour, around an hour. The second time I met with her was probably less than an hour. If I told you the first time was two hours and 12 minutes, would you believe me? That's what it shows us, us sitting in the room with her for two hours and 12 minutes? That's what the notes say. Okay. If that's what the video shows, then. Fair enough. Nonetheless, you met with her twice. Okay. She was placed under oath. Yes. And we'll start with the first meeting. You believe she continued to lie? Correct. You even tried to stop the interview the first time, correct? I didn't stop the interview. I tried to relay to her that, yeah, it was in her best interest to tell the truth. You didn't believe her? I didn't believe a lot of the... What is the objection? Say that one more time. Speculation. You can't give opinions about other witnesses. Sustained. Were you frustrated? Somewhat of, of some certain things I was, yes. Was she telling you things? We'll go to your second interview of her. Were you frustrated in the second interview as well? Yes, I was. You didn't believe she was being... I'll withdraw. During her second interview... At one point, you said to her, what you are telling us just doesn't make sense. Do you recall telling her that? That sounds about right. And this wasn't her first trial when she testified, right? I mean, I know you didn't believe her then, but this was during her proffer. Correct. Proffers, right? Yes. This was just wow, less, than a, less than a year ago, right? I don't remember the date, but that sounds right. Uh, the bump was an extortion, right? It was it was a attempted extortion, correct, somewhat. But what law enforcement didn't know is that an extortion had already happened, right? Don't believe there was an extortion prior. What law enforcement didn't understand is that the things said on the recording related to the fact that there had already been an earlier extortion. I disagree. Do you recall on the recordings repeatedly Charlie Adelson is talking about the characteristics of the person who did the bump? Yes. He's saying things like, he used his phone, he's not disguising himself, he's not giving 48 hours, he's not making a threat. Do you recall that? I do. Did it seem like he was comparing it to something else? To me? Yeah. It seemed like he was comparing it to a TV show. Fair enough. Because you don't know what happened on July 18th, 2014, right? July 18, 2014. 
You don't know what happened on the evening of July 18, 2014 in Charlie Adelson's house, right? Oh, you're referring to the day of the murder. I know what happened on that day, but not that evening, no. You don't know what happened in his house that night, right? Correct. <clears throat> During the bump, Charlie's way of calming his mom down, a co-conspirator, right? You consider her a co-conspirator? I do, yes. Charlie's way of calming down his mom, a co-conspirator, was telling her that he thought it was the police, right? That was one way, yes. So let me get this straight. Two people who have just done a murder prefer the bump to be a policeman rather than another co-conspirator or another bad guy. Correct. What could this note be? The only people who actually spoke to the undercover was Charlie Adelson and Donna Adelson, correct? Correct. And when they spoke to the undercover, they used their phones. Let me be more let me be more precise. Okay. When Charlie Adelson spoke to the undercover, he used his cell phone. He used yes, and he blocked his number when he called, yes. He star sixty seven day. Correct. He used his cell phone, though, correct? I believe he did. I can't remember the exact Fair. dial digits that it came from. Fair enough. Now, the calls that you put in, you can read the words, but... There's some guessing as to the meaning, correct, of what they're talking about? It's, it, it could be, yes. And Dolce Vita, in particular, you can't hear a lot of what Katie McBana was saying, correct? It's hard to hear a lot of it, yes. There's about 100 unintelligibles when she is speaking, correct? Correct. And there's a missing chunk of that meeting before the recording even starts, right? Correct. They got in the vehicle first and before they went into the restaurant. And let's talk about them getting in that vehicle. So before they get to Dolce Vita, Charlie Adelson and Katie McBana will meet in a car. He pulls up and she comes out of her office and gets in the car, yes. How long are they in that car for? It's an approximation of around 10, 15 minutes. I think you're right. And you don't know what was said in that car, right? No. Now, during this bump, you all are listening on the wires, right? Correct. And no one's paying the money. Correct. And part of what you're hearing is that the threats aren't big enough. No, I disagree with that. Okay. Uh, let me ask it this way. Okay. It starts with a bump on the street, right? Right. And, and we watched it. The gentleman who's playing Aladdin King, he's a little bit polite. Can we say that? Correct. He's the nicest Aladdin King I've ever seen in my life. Correct. There's reasons. Uh, the next event that happens is, well, there's a bunch of events, but let me tell you the next progression. Is a letter is, devel is delivered to Donna and Harvey Adelson's apartment. Correct. So now you've gone from the street to the apartment, right? That's correct. 
and the letter is a little more threatening. A little bit. And still no one pays. Correct. And then there's a couple calls to the office. There's a call to the office. Correct. Still no one pays. Correct. And then there's a text message that comes at like two or three in the morning to Donna Adelson, right? Yes. And the timing is kind of important, right? Um, it could be. It'd be taken that way. And the text message is definitely more threatening. Yes. Going to the wires very briefly. Don't worry, I'm not going to go over them all with you. Thank you. Do you recall some wires around April 26 where Katie and Sigfredo are fighting? Of 16, yes. And some wires that were not played in court. But do you recall that they were fighting about something completely different than this case? Could have been. They were fighting about a, a girl that Sigfredo found, I'm sorry, that Katie found on Sigfredo's cell phone. Sounds vaguely familiar. With a tattoo. I don't remember that part. Okay. And do you recall that the day before, or two days before the letter, law enforcement sends the letter to Donna and Harvey Adelson that Katie actually leaves the house. She leaves him. I do recall her leaving the house at some point. I don't remember the timing, though. And the call that Ms. Kappelman played for you, where they're fighting, Sigfredo, in the beginning of the call, thinks that she's talking about, like he says, you need to make an appointment to see your son. Recall that? Yes. And it's because she has just left the house the day before. Sounds correct. She's yes. left him. Correct. And she says to him in the text message, listen, I got to talk to you about something else. Yes. You recall that? I do. And you recall that Charlie Adelson finds out that these two have are having problems and he freaks out. I don't remember that. I remember him talking to her about their separation and trying to encourage her. And he's encouraging her to get back together with him, right? I do remember that, yes. By the way, uh, Ms. Kappelman asked you after the last bump text that was received in the early morning by Donna Adelson, she asked you if anyone actually told the undercover, go to the police and collect your reward. Do you remember her asking you that question? I thought that was before that text message. Well, let's just make this clear, whether it's okay. before or after. Okay. Isn't it true that that's precisely what Miss Adelson, Donna Adelson, told the undercover? If you have information, go to the police. She did at that point. That's correct. Right? That's what she said. On that call. Now, she didn't want to go to the police. She never went to the police, right? Correct. Charlie never went to the police. No. And you don't know why. You guess why, but you don't know why. There, there's reasonable belief, yes. But you don't know why he didn't go to the police. Can't read his mind, no. Now, 
May I have one moment, Your Honor? Looking at those text messages, by the way, after the night of July 18th, do you see a decrease in text messages initially? So if you're looking at July to September between Charlie Adelson and Catherine McBanua. A decrease in text messages, you're talking about 2014? Yeah, initially. I'd have to go back and look, I don't recall. Do you see that the relationship, though, as time goes on, gets stronger? Not boyfriend-girlfriend, but does definitely get stronger. I don't recall. Okay. Now, I want to just make sure that something was clear yesterday because I think it was a little confusing. And I, I don't think it was on purpose, but I want to make sure that the facts are clear. Sure. After Professor Markell was murdered, Wendy Adelson gave complete access to the Markells. Isn't that true? Until the email was sent. I don't know about complete access, but I believe I know at, when that email was sent, there were things that were cut off. Fair enough. But before the email was sent, there was a different type of access. There was better access. I would, okay. I could say that. Do you recall? And you know what? Let me set it up first. It might take a second, Your Honor. Go ahead. Especially with new technology. Oh, no, It's SX 130. SS? It's your exhibit 130. It's one of the wires. Call 989. Call the Dave call. Which one? The first call I think that was played yesterday. It was a call about Charlie and Donna's <coughs> affection for Dave. Sure, I remember. I remember several of them, but. And do you recall that Miss Kappelman played 19 minutes and 11 seconds of that call, and then I she stopped it. I don't recall how much or when, but that's possible, yes. Well, let, let me play when it was stopped. Okay. If I just play it, is it going to go on this And while we while we work on this, maybe it 
pass before I ask a question? Go ahead. To make money, they already have their kids. Um, okay. Did it work in the headphones? No. All right. Well, I think we can. I think we can hear it. It's pretty loud. Let's see if we can hear it. I'm going to play you at 20 minutes and 20 Looking seconds. Looking to make a whole. Want to, want to make money? They already have their kids. I'm not looking to make a whole. She well, owes it to those kids. Yeah, but she, she has an opportunity that she would throw in the garbage, and then these no. kids. And believe me, that's it. They're not going to have another no. dad. No. Well. And it's it was. Crazy. It was a tragedy. It was. A tra they had a dad. It was a tragedy. What happened? Yeah. Well. But what I'm, what I'm telling you. So there. 20 minutes and 25 seconds into the call, about two minutes after Mr. Ms. Kappelman stopped it. Charlie Adelson says it's a tragedy what happened to their dad, right? Yes, he did. And that was in response to his mom saying Dave would be a great dad, right? Correct. And Charlie says they already had a dad and it was a tragedy what happened to him. He did. When Charlie Adelson said that, on this call that was stopped before this jury when he said that on that call that's before the bump I believe it was yes that's 21 months after the murder correct he had no idea whatsoever that he was being recorded I would probably disagree with that but the other stuff, remember yesterday she brought in other stuff about Dave and she asked you those same questions. She said this is before the bump. You recall her asking you that? Yeah, it was before the bump. And she said it was almost two years after the murder. Correct. I'll leave it at that, Agent. No further questions. Redirect examination. Point being, two years after the murder, they're still screwing around in Wendy's love life. Is That's that what happened? That is correct. All right. A couple other things. The You were asked about, Mr. Rashbaum referred to it as the goodbye tour. I recall it as the farewell tour, but you know what? We're talking about the breakup trip between correct. Catherine Magbanoa and this defendant. Early July, I believe. Okay. Is it your recollection that that was the end of their, that actually was the end of their relationship, or is there evidence that they continued seeing each other for some time after that? Um, I believe there was a little bit of, um, I believe there was some seeing after that. Okay. Would the text messages refresh your recollection on that they issue? Would. Okay. They would. It's been a while. I tab these for you to take a look and see if the blue tabs refresh your recollection. Okay. Does that refresh your recollection? Yes. So when does it appear that Catherine Magbano and the defendant broke up? It appears like um, in August, around August 25th. Around August 25th of 2014? 2014. All right. And did they continue to stay in contact to varying degrees throughout the time from their breakup to, to the arrests in this yes, case? Yes, they did. Did you have an opportunity during your investigation to conduct any surveillance on Catherine Magbanoa and Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, we did. All right. And did you... Well, let me ask you if you've ever worked on or 
heard of a case where an extortionist commits their crimes wearing a fake Abe Lincoln beard and a floppy hat. No, I'm not. Did you ever observe Catherine Magbanawa or Sigfredo Garcia dressed like that? No, I didn't. No further questions. You may step down, Agent. Please call your next witness, State. Please call your next witness. Please call your next witness. Your Honor, at this time, the state rests. Members of the jury, we're going to take a break at this point. The bailiff will escort you back into the jury room. <laughs>